All right. Ready to pack your bags, at least mentally. Uh-huh. Love it. Today, we're going deep into Finland. Oh, yeah. Finland. You might be thinking of moving there. Right. Maybe just curious about Finnish culture or, hey, <laughs> maybe you just love deep dives with me. Always up for a good deep dive. Whatever brought you here, we've got tons of articles and research all about Finland. Yeah, and the thing that jumps out right away, it's this amazing mix, you know, east meets west. Oh. Both geographically and historically. Interesting. We've got articles on Finland's history with Sweden, Russia, and uh, wow, yeah. how all that shaped them, even right. down to their language and their love of saunas. Okay, now you've got my attention. Saunas, history. Mm -hmm. But I've also heard Finland always ranks high on that world happiness report. Mm -hmm. What's the secret? Are saunas really that magical? Uh-huh. Well, maybe the saunas help. But honestly, there's a lot more to it. I bet. Finland seems to have found this balance, you know? What do you mean? Modern life, but huge respect for nature. Individual freedom, but strong communities, too. Mm. It's like they've cracked the code to a good life. A code a lot of us are still searching for. Exactly. So let's start with that history. Centuries under Sweden, then Russia comes in. Yeah. How did all that turn Finland into what it is today? One article described it so well. Imagine, over 600 years under Sweden rule, that's where Swedish being one of their official languages comes from. Wow. Then, 1800s, Russia takes over. Big change. Finland had to navigate this whole new set of expectations. A cultural tightrope walk. Exactly. And they made it through, yeah. declaring independence in 1917. Yep. That resilience is impressive on its own. But speaking of identity, their connection to nature seems central, right? Totally. We keep seeing articles about thousands of lakes, forests, and this thing called every man's rights. Right. Every man's rights is amazing. It basically means you're free to roam around in nature, forage, camp, yeah. even fish in most places. Really? Doesn't matter who owns the land. It shows you how much they respect nature and how much they trust each other. That's mind blowing. I can barely walk my dog without seeing it keep off the grass sign. Yeah. Makes you wonder, is that connection to nature part of what makes them so happy? Hmm. It's definitely possible. Imagine escaping to these beautiful forests, wow. kayaking on a crystal clear lake. Whenever you need a break. Exact. That kind of access to nature is so rare. For sure. But Finland's not all wilderness. No way. Helsinki, their capital, seems pretty popular with expats. Yeah. What's the draw? Helsinki is this cool mix. Oh. Urban excitement, but also natural peace. I like that. One article called it a city where design is everywhere. Really? They were named World Design Capital back in 2012. And apparently, even paper cups on their airline, Finnair, got a designer makeover. Okay, now I'm really curious. Right. What is Finnish design? Is it all minimalist furniture? Sleek buildings? It's more than that. <sighs> Finnish design seems to be about functionality, mm. sustainability. Yeah. And this deep appreciation for natural materials. Okay. Clean lines, simple, but elegant. Yeah. Always with this human touch. So it's deeper than just looks. Yeah, the whole philosophy. That makes sense why people are drawn to Helsinki. But are there other cities worth checking out? Absolutely. For someone thinking of moving. Yeah. What about Tampere or Ulu? Okay, yeah. Tampere, they call it the Manchester of Finland. Oh, interesting. It's got that industrial feel. Cool. Tech and innovation hub. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's right between two huge lakes. So you still get that nature. Oh, yeah. And Ulu. Yeah. Gateway to the Arctic. Exactly. That seems like a totally different experience. It is. One article mentioned extreme darkness in winter. Right. But also this quirky annual air guitar championship. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. That's what I love about exploring new cultures. You find these unexpected things. Surprises. Totally. And Finns seem to be amazing at finding joy and celebrating, even when things are tough. I'm already loving Finland. We haven't even talked about the food yet. I've heard mixed reviews about Finnish food. It depends. But there's this story about a pizza named after Silvio Berlusconi. Oh, yeah. I gotta hear more about that. Pizza Berlusconi. Infamous. Uh-huh. What happened? So Berlusconi, the former Italian prime minister, yeah. he made some uh, not so nice comments about Finnish food. What do you say? Especially reindeer meat. Ouch. Yeah. A Finnish pizza chain, total <laughs> genius move. Yeah. They win this international pizza competition and they name their winning pizza after Berlusconi. No way. What was on it? The key ingredient, smoked reindeer, of course. Oh, that's brilliant. Turning a negative into a win. For sure. Yeah. But on a more serious note, 
what else is there to finish cuisine? It can't be all reindeer and funny pizza. Oh, no, no. Their food is very seasonal. Okay. And it reflects that blend of Scandinavian and Russian influence we talked about. Makes sense. Wild berries, hearty rye bread, fresh fish from the lakes, elk meat. Wow. Sounds good. And they love their sweets. Okay, my stomach is rumbling now. Uh Uh-huh. But before we go on a virtual Finnish food tour, let's talk about the seasons. They're pretty intense in Finland, right? They are. Long summer days, dark winters. How do people actually live with that? It seems like the changing seasons are really ingrained in their culture. Huh. One article even talked about how their flag, blue and white, represents those extremes. Oh. Blue for the lakes, white for the snow. That's actually beautiful. It is. But practically speaking, how do they handle those dark winters? I can barely handle a few cloudy days. They've turned it into an art, I think. An art. Winters are for getting cozy inside, enjoying those saunas and all those magical winter activities. Oh. Skiing, ice skating, even swimming in frozen lakes. Wait, what? Followed by a sauna, of course. Okay, you're just showing off now. Uh Uh-huh. Swimming in a frozen lake. That's hardcore. A little bit. But it sounds kind of exhilarating. It's like they found a way to enjoy every season no matter what. Makes sense. And those long summer days, almost 24 hours of sunlight, they make up for the dark winter. Right, it balances out. It creates this rhythm to life that's really unique to Finland. I'm starting to get why they're so happy. But let's be practical for a minute. Okay. Moving to Finland is a huge decision. It is. What are some of the things you need to think about? Visas, housing, all that. Well, that's a whole other deep dive. Uh Uh-huh. But we've got articles on visas, the housing market, even the healthcare system. Okay. It's a lot to unpack. Yeah. But from what I've seen, Finland's got a pretty well-organized and efficient system. That's good to know. I'm definitely sensing a theme here. What's that? Balance, efficiency, and this respect for nature and well-being. But before we get into the nitty-gritty of moving, let's pause for a second. I think our listeners need a minute to process all this amazing information. Definitely. We've covered a lot already. Okay, so we've heard Finland is this magical place with happy people, amazing nature, and designer everything. Seems that way, yeah. But let's get real. For those thinking about actually moving there, Mm -hmm. what does it take to relocate to Finland? Well, first things first, visas. Right. The good news is, if you're an EU citizen... Easy. You're basically set. Free movement, all that. Gotcha. But for everyone else, it depends why you're moving. Work, study, joining family. Exactly. Those are the usual reasons. Right. And each one has its own rules for residence permits. Okay. The Finnish Immigration Service website seems pretty good, though. That's a good place to start. Makes sense. But here's a curveball. Oh. Finland has this personal identification code system. Oh, what? It's like a... A social security number. Yeah. But way more intense. Okay, now I'm imagining a social security number doing bicep curls. But seriously, what is this code? It's called Hengelatonis in Finnish oh. or person be techning in Swedish. Oh, wow. And from what I've read, you need it for everything. Everything. Opening a bank account, healthcare, mm. taxes, even buying groceries online, apparently. So it's not just some paperwork thing. It's like the key to life in Finland. Pretty much. It fits with their whole thing about being streamlined and efficient. Right. Everything's digital, connected, which, you know. Could be good or bad. Exactly. Depends how you see it. Good point. Okay, so let's say you've got your visa, your personal code. What's next? Well, got to find a place to live. Of course. And that's where things get interesting. Oh, so? Helsinki being the capital. Yeah. It's pretty competitive, especially for rentals. Makes sense. But we did see an article suggesting to look into the greater Helsinki area. What's that? It's like a network of towns and cities around Helsinki. Oh, okay. Gives you a bit more space, and it's easier on the wallet. So you get to enjoy Helsinki without breaking the bank. Exactly. What about those other cities we talked about, Tampere and Ulu? What are they like for housing and cost of living? Tampere's got that booming tech scene going on. Right. It seems to be drawing a younger, more international crowd. Makes sense. So yeah, housing is in demand there. Mm. But overall, it's more affordable than Helsinki. And Ulu being further north, Mm. even better on the budget. So it depends what you're looking for and what you can afford. Exactly. Big city life versus a more laid back, nature-focused vibe. Speaking of which, how do people get around in Finland? 
Is it all reindeer sleighs and ice skates? Ha <laughs> ha, not quite. Right. Although they do have those amazing ice roads in the winter. I've seen pictures. But for everyday stuff, public transport is great. Oh, good. Especially in the cities. Helsinki's got trams, buses, metro. Nice. And of course, cycling is huge there. Bike lanes everywhere. So you could ditch the car. Yep. Go for a healthier, more eco-friendly way to get around. I like that. And if you need to travel further. Yeah. Their train system is really well connected, super reliable. Nice. You can easily hop on a train and explore other cities or head out to the countryside. I'm picturing myself now speeding through the Finnish countryside on a sleek train, sipping coffee from a designer travel mug. Uh-huh. Sounds about right. But, okay, let's be real. Sure. There have to be some downsides to moving to Finland, right? Yeah. What are some of the challenges? Well... The language can be tricky. Yeah, Finnish. Lots of Finns do speak English, especially in the cities. Good to know. But life would be a lot smoother if you knew at least some Finnish. I can imagine. And it's not exactly known for being easy to learn. I've heard it's tough. It's a challenge. What about the cost of living in general? Finland's got to be up there with the other Scandinavian countries, right? And it's not cheap, no. Right. But it's not outrageously expensive either. Okay. Helsinki is on par with other big Scandinavian cities. Yeah. But smaller places are definitely more affordable. That makes sense. And here's the thing. They have a really good social safety net. Uh, Universal health care, free education, great parental leave. Wow. All that good stuff. So you pay higher taxes. But you get a lot back. Exactly. It all ties back into that work-life balance, community-first thinking we've been talking about. Yeah. But let's address the uh, the polar bear in the room. Ha ha. Love that. Those long, dark winters. Mm -hmm. How do people cope with the lack of sunlight? It's definitely an adjustment, okay. especially if you're coming from somewhere sunny. Yeah. But one article mentioned this sisu spirit. Sisu. It's like this grit and resilience they have. Mm -hmm. It helps them get through the darkness. I see. They focus on cozy indoor things, saunas, spending time with each other. Makes sense. And let's not forget all the amazing winter activities. True. Imagine skiing through snowy forests, ice skating under the stars. Magical. Maybe even seeing the northern lights. Wow. It's like a real-life winter wonderland. And then summer comes around. They soak up every second of those long, sunny days. It's about finding that balance, riding the wave of nature. Mm. Okay, I'm convinced. Finland sounds amazing. Nature, culture, a lifestyle that's all about well-being. But what about the people? Oh, yeah. Good point. We've talked about their love for nature, their quiet strength. Right. But what are Finns really like? That's where those stereotypes about them being quiet and reserved come in. Oh, uh, yes. But it's more than that. They value honesty, being direct. Okay. Small talk's not really their thing. So they're not going to shower you with compliments? Probably not. Or chat about the weather for an hour? Not their style. Gotcha. But once you get to know them, yeah. they're incredibly loyal and genuine. I like that. And they have this dry, witty humor that can be really funny once you get it. It's like a hidden treasure. I have, yeah. Okay, so we've covered visas, housing cost of living, even the Finnish personality, anything else someone should know before moving there. Any quirky traditions or weird facts? Oh, plenty. Did you know Finland's the only country where it's illegal to buy a wife? Wait, wait, hold on. Buy a wife? Is this some <laughs> Viking thing I don't know about? <laughs> no, no, relax. It's a joke. Okay, good. It's actually this hilarious event they have every year. What is this? It's called the Wife Carrying World Championships. No way. Men compete to carry their wives through an obstacle course. That's wild. And the prize. The winner gets his wife's weight in beer. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I thought you were serious for a minute there. Haha, <laughs> easy mistake. But seriously, any other interesting stuff about Finnish culture? Well, there's this unique tradition called mobile phone throwing. You're kidding, right? Nope, totally real. People compete to chuck their old cell phones as far as they can. What's why? It's a fun, quirky way to let off steam and recycle old electronics. That's pretty awesome. And let's not forget their love for heavy metal. Really? Metal? Oh, yeah. Finland has one of the highest concentrations of heavy metal bands per capita in the world. So you're telling me that under all that calm and collectedness, Finns are secretly rocking out to heavy metal? Uh-huh. Could be. It's just another example of how surprising and multi-layered Finnish culture is. My mind is blown. We've talked about their nature love, their sauna obsession, their efficient systems, their dry humor. 
Hmm. And now heavy metal. Is there anything these people don't do well? Uh Uh-huh. Who knows? Maybe they're secretly terrible bakers. Maybe that's the one thing. Yeah. But before we start questioning our own achievements. Yeah, good point. Let's take a quick break. I think our listeners need a moment to digest all this and maybe cue up some Finnish heavy metal. Okay, we're back. Final stretch of our Finnish journey. Time to wrap things up. We've covered history, culture, nature, those funny traditions. It's been a lot. But what really stands out to me is this sense of balance they have. Like they've found the secret to a good life. Yeah, you see it everywhere. That balance wow. between city and nature, personal freedom, but taking care of each other. I see it. Hard work and knowing how to relax. Even their sauna tradition, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, the saunas. Intense heat, then a jump in the icy water. It's yeah. all about balance. They're always pushing their limits, but then finding that equilibrium again. Let's talk about another thing Finland seems to be great at. Education. Yeah. We've got articles here praising their education system, always ranked among the best in the world. What's their secret? It's not about memorizing facts or taking tons of tests. No. Finnish education seems to focus on developing the whole person. Interesting. Creativity, thinking critically, and loving to learn. They start young too, right? From a very young age, yeah. So it's not just stuffing information into kids' heads. It's about encouraging them to be curious and helping them reach their potential. Exactly. Teachers have a lot of freedom in how they teach. Okay. They're encouraged to adjust their methods depending on the kid. And get this. What? Teaching is a really respected job in Finland. Teachers are paid well. Makes a difference, I bet. Huge difference. When you can attract talented people who are passionate about teaching, yeah, it changes everything. But it's not just academics either. No, they also focus on arts, music, spending time outdoors. Exactly. The whole child. Their mind, their emotions, their physical well-being. Right. And they really believe in learning through play. Especially when kids are little. Yeah, exactly. It's like they understand that kids learn best when they're having fun. Makes you think. Yeah. Maybe that's why Finnish kids do so well in those international tests. Could be. They're not just memorizing. They're developing a love of learning that will stick with them. That's the goal, for sure. It's pretty amazing. It shows how Finland invests in its people, their well-being, and creating a society that values education, learning throughout life. Powerful stuff. Really inspiring. It makes me want to rethink our own approach to education. But okay. I can't resist. Got to talk about saunas one last time. Uh Uh-huh. Of course. It's clearly more than just a hot room. Yeah. What is it about saunas that's so important in Finnish culture? One article talked about it like a cleansing ritual. A ritual. For the body and the soul. It's where they relax, connect with friends and family, sweat out all the stress. We're not talking fancy spa saunas, are we? Nope. These are traditional saunas heated with wood. Wow. You find them in homes, by the lakes, even offices. Offices. And there's a whole process to it. Like what? Birch branches, cold plunges. It's a whole experience. Okay, now I understand the sauna obsession. Right. It's like a mini version of their whole culture. Right. Embracing extremes, finding balance, being close to nature. Exactly. And anyone can enjoy it. It's not a luxury. It's just part of life there. Makes sense. You can be the boss or someone working construction, and you'll both be in the sauna together. It brings people together. It does. All right. I think we've covered it all. Mm -hmm. History, culture, nature, food, even saunas. Yep. Pretty thorough. But what about the big question? Why Finland? What makes it so special? And why should someone think about making it their home? It's hard to explain, but it's a feeling you get when you really look at their culture. A feeling? The respect they have for nature, the focus on work-life balance, the strong sense of community, their quiet strength, and how they bounce back from tough times. They've figured out how to live in harmony with nature and each other, and you see that in everything they do. Like, they've found that sweet spot between working hard and being content. Yeah. They want to be the best. But they also know how to slow down and enjoy the simple things. That's it. And that's a good lesson for all of us. No matter where we live. So true. I think we've given our listeners a good taste of what Finland's all about. We've tried. Whether they're thinking of moving there or just adding it to their travel list, I bet they'll love it. Oh, I'm sure of it. It's an amazing country. Maybe one day you'll find yourself in a cozy Finnish cafe, sipping coffee. Surrounded by happy Finns. Feeling right at home in the land of a thousand lakes. That would be the dream. And maybe even rocking out to some Finnish heavy metal. Uh Uh-huh. Who knows? All right. That wraps up our deep dive into Finnish culture. Hope everyone enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed it. 
and that you want to learn even more about Finland. There's so much to discover. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep.